Why does this feel like the last stand? So yes, the day arrived and we got the big update talking about the future of Legends of Runeterra. Which is something we knew was coming because it was mentioned in uh, Riot's update where they also fired a lot of people. And from the personal message from Legends of Runeterra aimed at the community. And we expected this to be a big talk because of who made an appearance here. We got Dave Guskin, the executive producer of Legends of Runeterra, who's been around from what I believe was the very beginning. We also got Andre, also known as Meddler, who is the head of the League studio. Previously, this studio took care of League, TFT and Wild Rift, but now, as you'll see, Legends of Runeterra is joining them too. More on that later. We also got Mark Merrill, also known as Trindamir, whom I keep calling the president of games at Riot because that's a title they previously used, but now he's the chief product officer. Which is still a very similar position where Trindamir is looking over all of Riot's games and making sure they are good. And then we got Eric Shen, who was the product lead on Legends of Runeterra, but who will soon become the executive producer. Which also means that Dave Guskin is not leaving Riot, but he is moving onto an R&D project. Why is this important? maybe you'll see in a future video. So if we take all of these in, you can tell that we are about to dive into some serious topics. So let's have a look at what we have learned about the future of Legends of Runeterra. At the beginning, Mark Merrill starts with the introduction of how Legends of Runeterra even came to be. Apparently, they started working on the game back in 2011, which is even before Hearthstone. In fact, there is a known story where the same year Hearthstone was revealed, Riot wanted to also reveal their card game, but they didn't want to directly compete, so they waited a few years to make the game even better, and maybe they missed a train a little bit. Anyway, from the beginning, they always had a big love for CCGs. And more than that, they loved building their own decks of cards. Which is why Legends of Runeterra was made with a business model that specifically enabled people to have fun with that. Of course, looking back, we all know that this business model is awesome for the consumer. It is not awesome for the developer because it doesn't really generate much revenue. You kinda need to buy cards in a collectible card game. And here, Mark Merrill directly confirmed this. Specifically, he mentioned that they never got the formula right and that they are always spending a lot more money investing into the game compared to what the game brought in. Which is why, throughout the last couple of years, they tried many different things. But ultimately, things led us here. Now thankfully, we also got the confirmation that they will try to keep delivering things for this game. Because they know people are heavily invested in it. They will not shut it down out of nowhere. Which, to be honest, is a noble move from Riot. Most companies would pull the plug at this point. This is also where Meddler stepped in and confirmed that the love and the passion from the players is what encouraged Riot to keep trying new things. After which Dave once again confirmed that after all the iterations, after making changes to PvP, the labs and ultimately Path of Champions, they noticed the shift in their player base. And over time, the vast majority of their players started spending their time in PvE. Which is why the team confirmed their focus is going there. As of right now, Path of Champions still continues to be the most played game mode. And people play it even more than standard ranked. Which in every competitive game ever is always the top game mode. This should tell you just how much of a shift in player base there was. So ultimately, to quote them, what they are doing is that they are taking the resources they have and they are applying them to where the players really are. Because previously they still had a big support for their PvP because in their mind, this is what the focus of a CCG game has always been. But now they know that they would have a lot more success elsewhere, which is why all of these big changes are happening. Which is also where we got a really big piece of news. The next Legends of Runeterra expansion will be the last one as we know it. Meaning that we will likely get about three new champions and bunch of supporting cards to come with them. After that, we should get something new. Just keep in mind that Riot will not stop making new champions after that. 
They just hinted that perhaps the new champions would be far more integrated into Path of Champions. Which is also where Medler mentioned another interesting thing. Simply put, they aim for a better connection between all of their games. Be it League, TFT, Wild Rift or now even Legends of Runeterra. So they are totally fine with the other games essentially supporting Legends of Runeterra, because they know this game can support their universe in return. This was one of the big reasons why it made sense for Riot to keep spinning all the plates. Another thing they mentioned is that with TFT being focused on strategy, League being all about the introduction of new champions, Wild Rift kind of making the League PC audience sad, it made sense for Legends of Runeterra to embrace their focus on PvE, which is something League's IP had not really had before. At least not permanently. Maybe one day. And so, this is where we got some updates on what's happening with Path of Champions. First of all, there will be a big expansion on the map with the Freljord. As you can see, once again we are getting some awesome art for the map. We are getting a new 3D model, which I can totally slap onto my map, which I'm using for the MMO videos. With the big boss being Lissandra. And very intentionally, that fight is supposed to be difficult. And that's because soon after the Freljord comes out, they are releasing an expansion for the entire game mode. They call it Constellations. Wait, hang on a minute. I knew it! That's right, Legends of Runeterra is getting the Constellation system from another kind of known uh, gacha game. Except here it is not tied to a gacha mechanic. Except it is still purchasable with real money, which is not actually as bad as it may sound. This is a PvE game after all, and it is totally earnable for free. So now, instead of the three star system which they had before, you can now level up your champions all the way to rank 6. So with 20 new champions and 6 constellation upgrades, that is a decent amount of new content to be experimenting around. Of course, this also means that all the champions are getting more powerful over time as you level them up. Hence why the Lissandra fight was intentionally designed to be difficult. You are supposed to pick up some stars before you challenge her. Another interesting thing is that they seemingly intend to have everything balanced around this in the future. Which means that it is possible that in the future there may be another crazy fight which will require you to have everyone leveled up. In a way, Path of Champions is getting a new progression system here. But of course, even after you level everyone up, there will be new champions joining the game mode, which also means you will have more things to simply level up from zero. As an example, they revealed that Aatrox and Nora will be joining in soon, with Nora having some big constellation upgrades focusing on portals. Now after this, they did also tease that when Arcane comes, there will likely be a new Path of Champions adventure there. Nothing was confirmed here, but that's what it seems to be. But after that, that's really where everything ends. This is where they thank everyone for being part of this journey and they just wrap it up. So if you look at the details, we didn't really learn that much from this video. All we really learned is that there are some big changes around the focus of the game. When it comes to the specific features, we haven't learned much yet. However, this is not where the new info ends, because after this, they also released their FAQ. And let me tell you, what a juicy FAQ this was. They answered a lot of questions, a lot of which were some that normal companies would never answer. Legends of Runeterra is definitely not afraid of jumping into some of the hard questions. Which should be apparent with their very first one. Is lore dying? Short answer is, no it's not, they just need better business model. Yeah, this FAQ is very big, I will TLDR all the answers. You shifted into PvE, then refocused on PvP, and now you are shifting to PvE again. How did that happen? The TLDR is, at the beginning, PvE wasn't really monetizable, at least not without big system changes. Which is why we are where we are. What is the last set coming out? 
Here they answered what they said in the video. The last set will be similar to what we had before, but the next one after that will be something new. What's happening with competitive? Will there be more tournaments? This is where we got an answer which I did not expect. I expected the shift of focus to go to PvE, with PvP staying basically as it is right now. But apparently, that's not happening. For now, competitive PvP will be put into hibernation. This includes gauntlets, ranked rewards, tournaments and esports. Standard, Eternal and Versus AI will always be open, but the ranked game's functionality will be different. This is definitely an interesting shift. It shows us that there is such a massive imbalance between PvE and PvP, that the competitive PvP is not even worth keep running properly. If that's what it is, then the shift to PvE is actually giving Legends of Runeterra a second shot. Because this means they are really focusing where the players are. Will there be World Championship in 2024? Unfortunately, no. I am a community member who runs community events. What happens to those events? Unfortunately, Riot can't support them directly anymore. What about projects in the works such as Community Card Kitchen and the World Championship Rising? All of those are still happening. Don't worry about those. What's happening with the Lore Invitational and the Mystery Event? Are you cancelling it? It's still going to happen, but there are some adjustments. They intend on talking to all the competitive players to see how they can support them even in their shift to PvE. After which, the questions get really interesting. Why don't you just sell things people want? The answer is a bit sad. It's because the cosmetics simply didn't sell well. And it's more expensive to make them compared to how many actually sell. The team wanted to do stuff like animated cards, but the high cost is what always held them back. Which is followed with another crazy question. Why don't you pull back on the generosity and make some money from cards? Apparently, a lot of conversations about this already happened. But the prices would have to be way too ridiculous to also keep up with the cost of PvP. Because remember, if you wanna sell cards, PvP also has to be fully supported. And at that point, you would just be going to the classic CCG business model, which everyone hates. Except for whales. I think they like these. So sticking to their original gameplay promise of making new card decks, they don't really want to do that. Does that mean that the game will be monetized more moving forward? To quote them, quite frankly, yes. But they want the spending to be responsible. So while there will be some new things that are purchasable for Path of Champions, it shouldn't be anything ridiculous. They just need to find a way to self-sustain the game. Why don't you release in China? Lore is the only Riot game not in China. I actually did not know this. That's despite the fact that Lore got a lot of weird censorship. Apparently it's because it is quite a bit of a risk. Going into a new market is one thing. Going into a market with specialized licensing for randomized content such as card packs, that's a whole another one. Why don't you release draft mode? Here they confirmed that they had a working prototype which was pretty good, but right now they don't really have the resources to just release it. It is possible it will happen one day, but not right now, not when they are shifting into PvE. Why hasn't Riot's leadership helped Lore's success? Honestly, this is a bit of a weird one. Anyway, as the answer says, the leadership clearly always supported Lore. Not only did they decide not to pull the plug, but they also went through the entire hassle of shifting the entire game's focus. Again, any other company would be done with this game at this point. Look at Heroes of the Storm. Why is Riot investing into unreleased games that are not lore? This question came out a little bit selfish. The short answer is, it is all about balancing having great games in your portfolio, but also having new games still in the oven. Nobody would like to cancel their own game, especially if it is a live service. That would not look good for the developer, but at the same time, nobody wants to sit in one place not doing much. Why doesn't Riot advertise lore? See, this is a bit of a strange one. Now they are not talking about advertising in something like Leaks Client, we'll talk about that in a moment. It's more just general marketing. To which I have to say, 
Riot did do a lot of that in the past. People just kind of ignored it. Given the nature of marketing, that would mean uh, the marketing didn't really work. But you should keep in mind that Legends of Runeterra got all of those stunning animations from all the regions. They got big music drops and they got big animations whenever a new expansion released. So they did actually have a lot of good marketing, but it simply wasn't that effective. And so going forward, they will take advantage of the fact that they are now linked to the other games. I heard Lore is joining the League Studios. Why wasn't it before and what does it mean? So the League Studio is a new organizational change. And it is not intended to be for all games with League's IP. So when it comes to something like the MMO, that might not be part of this. But League and TFT already shared the same code. And Wild Rift shared the same experience with League. So all of these got bundled together. Which is also why Legends of Runeterra wasn't originally part of this. Because besides the characters, they didn't share much gameplay wise. Also, when it comes to what does this mean, it means that whenever there is gonna be an event shared across the IP, Legends of Runeterra will get something too. And yes, it is also possible that now Legends of Runeterra might be properly used to push forward some of the stories, especially since it is now focusing on PvE. Why isn't lore in the League client? Well, good news, there will be more starting in early February and then periodically after that, there will be new promotions in the client staring at the faces of League players. What's happening with patch notes, articles and streams? The LDR, they should be happening, they just need to figure out the format. And lastly, the best question to top them all, why don't you just kill lore? The LDR, they love lore, they just need a better business model to keep it sustained. So. While this is it for the really juicy FAQ, Spider-X went around the Legends of Runeterra subreddit and he found some more details. We got a question from the devs on monetization. Apparently, the Emporium and the Legacy Cosmetics never outsold the shards for Path of Champions. And that even counts the passes whenever those had some rewards for Path of Champions. So it seems like people just really wanted to buy anything related to Path of Champions. Even when they released some of the bundles with Aurelian Soul or Elise, people jumped on those. So they still intend on keeping everything earnable for free. But they are also fine with letting people buy the progression with real money if they want to speed it up. I have no objections here, this is totally fine because this is not undermining the integrity of the game and one player buying it does not ruin the experience for anyone else since it is PvE. Simply put, play the game however you want. Also a really great piece of news is that in League's client there will be a new Legends of Runeterra icon. I didn't know this but apparently they tested this for OCE. Of course, this also means that the Emporium will have some more Path of Champions items now. And when it comes to finances, they can't really share the details. But it was confirmed that each year the game cost multiple times what it generated in revenue. The crazy part is that whenever they invested more heavily into marketing and cosmetics, all they have done is widen the gap in the earnings. So that's why there wasn't a lot of marketing. It didn't do much. And yes, they confirmed that they still expect Legends of Runeterra to keep losing money. They just need to get it into a spot where the costs are reasonable and they can be covered for by the other games. So yes, Riot has the full intention to keep supporting this game. As to how well that will go with PvE, I am curious to see myself. Honestly, I would play a bit more of Path of Champions if it was directly linked to canon story. You know, it is PvE, I think that's what a lot of people would love to see. But then again, you would have to close your eyes when you play different champions playing different adventures. I don't know, maybe just one of those adventures is canon and everything else is made up. Something like that would work. Anyway, in case even that doesn't work, Riot, I think you're ready. You don't have a gacha game yet and you are very close with one of your systems. I think everyone would agree, that would be one way to sustain the game. 